One of the questions I'm sometimes asked at training events is this one. Mike, we finished our project, but now my client, my sponsor, my boss wants a second phase. How can I integrate that into my project? So in this video, I'll give you my answer. My answer to this question is simple. In most cases, you would be wisest to treat this phase two element as a new project rather than as an extension to the old project. And there are many reasons for this, but as is always the case, three really good reasons will always be more compelling than 20 weak ones. So here are my three reasons why I recommend that you don't have a phase two, you launch a second project. My first reason is simplicity. Adding another phase onto a nearly completed project is a bit like building a new house and wiring it into the electrical system of the house next door. It makes it far more complex and far less safe. On the other hand, the wiring would be far simpler and far less risky if you take a new feed into your new home and wire in the circuits you need for that one. So simplicity is the first reason. And we know, by the way, that the bigger a project gets, the more complex it gets, the more risky it gets, the more likely it is to go wrong. My second reason is that it's more energizing to start a new project. We know that completing a project and that feeling of having got something done is energizing. And we also know that starting something new is energizing. However, as you get towards the end of a project and you suddenly learn that a project that you thought was nearly over is now gonna go on for longer and longer, that can be demoralizing, that can sap energy from you and from your team. Finishing phase one, marking the end of a project and starting phase two as a new project can inject energy and it will also give you the opportunity to reselect a new team to meet the needs of your new project. My third reason is accountability. When you merge phase two into phase one, then all of your overspends or underspends and all of your overruns or underruns get carried over from phase one into phase two. That muddies the water. It makes it hard to track what's happened and why, and therefore accountability and good governance get diluted. Additionally, there'll be more opportunity to miss problems or to hide problems from phase one. And if there are problems, lessons may not get learned. So should you extend? Don't get me wrong. Phased projects have a proper place in project management. It's when you define and design and plan your project that is the right time to think about how many phases you need and what those phases consist of. When you do this, you can also define the governance structures that will enable you to properly track progress and expenditure and set up key points where you can learn lessons as you go. That way you can be more accountable and your team can learn lessons and celebrate progress at its milestones. And crucially, your project will be simpler. With less complexity comes less risk and more chance of delivering to budget, to specification, and on time. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. And I will look forward to seeing you in the next one.